Uh, Teresa brings a family photo symbolizing her love and dedication to her family. a knitted dog to symbolize her creativity, all of the things she lovingly made for others, and her beloved pet Oscar. Nolene brings school books to symbolize her vocation as a teacher, her love of languages and maths, her commitment to her students, and the strong relationships she built with her colleagues. Catherine brings an orchid to symbolize her love of outdoors, nature, and gardening. <coughs> Our final symbol of Mam's life will be a poem which Marion will read. My mother kept a garden a garden of the heart. She planted all the good things that gave my life its start. 
She turned me to the sunshine and encouraged me to dream, fostering and nurturing the seeds of self-esteem. And when the winds and rain came, she protected me enough, but not too much, because she knew I'd need to stand up strong and tough. Her constant good example always taught me right from wrong, markers for my pathway that will last a lifetime long. I am my mother's garden. I am her legacy. And I hope today she feels the love reflected back from me. Mum was born in London to parents from Clare and Longford. The family ba moved back to Ballinalee where she grew up, having a very happy childhood. At Clumbrony National School, she began to learn skills that she carried throughout her life. At home, her love for knitting and sewing was encouraged by her mother, Dilly. As she moved through her education, her passion for language and her flair for maths developed. She honed these skills further in UCD. Throughout these years, she spent her summers at home on the farm, working closely with her dad, Peter, brother, Liam, and sister of Mary and Teresa. This set, the su this set the tone for summers to come, which she spent tending the flowers, vegetables, and fruit in our garden in Drum Crow. Upon graduating from UCD, she pr pursued a career in teaching, which became her vocation. She cherished every student she, that she came into contact with, calling them my kids. She also built strong friendships with her colleagues in Boriski and Cavan, which lasted throughout her life. At home, Mam was always supportive. She was a rock for Dad and us. She showed us the importance of strength, determination and positivity, all the while being gentle, kind and selfless. Everything she did, work and hobbies, went towards making other people happy. Friends, families and neighbours uh, got toys, jam, dresses, flowers and more. Many people here would have eaten our jam, planted something she grew or worn something she made. We'd, we're eternally grateful for the time we had to make cherished memories with Mam. Her time was extended by the great work of the staff in St. James's Hospital, and she was given comfort by the care of the palliative care team and staff in Cavan General Hospital in her last few months. Uh, we'd also like to thank Father Casey for his assistance in making the arrangements today. Uh, she greatly appreciated all of the companionship and help that came from family, neighbours, friends and the wider community around home. We would keep Mam alive in our hearts knowing that she was the best wife and mother we could ever hope for. I invite you now to stand as we continue with our Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. That lovely tribute to Margaret from her family. We will continue now as we celebrate her life, as we mourn her death, and as we hand her over into the care of God completely that God may honor her with life in heaven. Let us remember, all of us, that we make mistakes, that life is fragile, that we stumble and fall, we pray. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done, what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy in us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord of mercy, let us pray.
<coughs> Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up to death so that all might be saved and pass from death to life. We humbly ask you to comfort your servants in their grief. As we remember Margaret here and place her before you, receive her into the arms of your mercy. We pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated as we listen to the readings. First reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like annihilation, but they are at peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out. As sparks run through the stubble, so will they. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love, for grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord.
second reading, a reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I John, I, John, heard a voice from heaven say to me, Write down, happy are those who die in the Lord. Happy indeed, the Spirit says, now they can rest forever after their work, since their good deeds go with them. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle. They shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn they shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right, they shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful, they shall have mercy shown to them. Happy the pure in heart, they shall see God. Happy the peacemakers, they shall be called sons and daughters of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. That famous passage of scripture that Father Jason has read is called the Sermon on the Mount. It's often regarded as a summary of all that Jesus was and stood for and taught. And the strange thing about it is, is that it's full of contradiction. It's full of things that really we shouldn't fit together. And yet that's where he places them. How happy are the poor in spirit and any of us who have ever been poor in spirit knows it's not a time when we can be too happy. Happy are the gentle. The gentle usually get walked on. Happy those who mourn, which is what we're at now. You shall be comforted. How could Jesus place such contradictory things side by side and invite us then to step into it all and and feel warmth and comfort and happiness. Well, we have an opportunity to do that today because we are going to celebrate the life and the person of Margaret King. And we know that the last years of her life were very, very difficult. While she was sick, she struggled with it. And then finally, she died. And we know that death like that is is full of grief, it's full of parting, it's full of tears, it's full of everything that we treasure and hold, hold on to. And yet here we are, and we're invited to rejoice and be glad for Margaret. So let us see what we can make of it all. I'd like you during the course of Mass, just to hold Margaret and your memory of her in your heart, 
as we give it all to God. Last night, we prayed and thought of Margaret, and I asked the family to remember Margaret as a teacher, which she was, that was her career, and to see how, as a teacher, she stood in the shoes of Jesus, who was a teacher, and how he taught people not just to love God, not just to behave well together, but in the end he taught them how to suffer, and he taught them how to die, taught all of us the most deeply mysterious lesson in his own passing from this life and how Margaret wrapped her own suffering in that and taught not just when she was in school but taught when she was able to do nothing and when the palliative care nurses came and attended to her when she was helpless. She was still teaching and she was a very, very good teacher. This morning I want to leave that to one side and I want to look at the other side of her life, which was emphasized here in, by the family in the beginning. Margaret was a wife, and she was a mother. And she built her home out in Drum Crow with her family there. Coming from her own family, her own natural family, where she grew up, she made a second family. In Drum Crow. I want you just to look at that. Because we'd often think that, you know, being wife and family, sure it's bread and butter. Sure, what could we. There's no bells and whistles in that. <laughs> it's very ordinary, very plain, very everyday. And yet, if we look at it carefully, we'll be able to see something far richer and far more. I'd like to turn again to the story of Jesus because when we look at Jesus, we often look at the very end of his life, the time when he was in a public mission and when he was a great teacher. And we remember his stories and his teaching. We remember too that he was a great healer, the power that was in his fingers, in his hands, as he touched people. And we often forget that he spent most of his life at home, in and around Nazareth, in family life, working, doing what we don't know. But more than likely, he was just living and building family life. 30 years of his life, roughly, he spent at that. And something short of three years he spent in his public mission on his, what we would regard as career. That's the end that's often held up and we sort of forget about the rest as if it was of no importance. But even in his public mission, he gathered a group of people round him. He wasn't on his own. He wasn't isolated. He had friends, he had family, he had cherished disciples whom he called apostles. And he would move with them and sit down in the evening and have a meal with them and listen to them and talk with them and share the beat of the day with them. That was so much a part of his day as well. We tend just to <coughs> hop into the, the spectacular things he did and forget all that. And yet that's where it was, his life was rooted and grounded. So much so that at the end of his life when he was parting company with them. He had what we call the Last Supper. And it's full of poignant feeling that he knew he was leaving, he knew his life was about to end, and he wanted to say farewell. And was there, breaking bread, sharing a <coughs> wine with them, that he, he chose to say farewell. Now what has happened with the Last Supper is that we have ritualized it and we have preserved it in the Mass here, in the Eucharist. But if we don't understand just how deeply Jesus was embedded in the ordinary, plain, 
everyday life with his disciples. We won't understand the Last Supper. And we won't understand what he was trying to say to us. That that's where I meet you. That's where you can live. That's where you will stand up and sit down and be with God. And when we think of Margaret, I want you to think of her precisely there in her home with Henry and the children, cooking, doing the different things she did out in the garden, looking after her plants, making jam, doing whatever she did. The home of the house, the atmosphere that was there, and the presence of God in it. That's what we don't often appreciate. That's where God puts his feet down. That's where he puts his knees under my table. That's where he sits and talks to us before ever we come to a ritual or to a formal prayer meeting or to a Eucharist like this. And Margaret in some way instinctively understood that. And she bit her home round that. And just the same way as she was a, a teacher and showed forth the face of God in that, so as a homemaker, as a wife, as a mother, as a person who was there, she showed forth the face of God there as well. I'd like you to see in the, the world we live in, the person who makes the home is often discounted. It used to be like that. We all know that. It used to be quite different. But in recent times, we've all been urged to get out and have a career and do things out there and be in the public view. And what happens at home behind the doors, well, it should look at it's private, leave it there, it's small b. Or, it's not that important. But it is. It's where our treasure is. It's where we grow out of. It was a home like that that Margaret grew out of. It's a home like that she wanted to make. And critically now for us today, it's a home like that to which she is going. That's our faith. That's our hope. That's what we stand up in. That's why we are here in church this morning. And that's why we rejoice and are glad. As Margaret was, was happy to build her home with, with Henry and the children and just stand up and look at the sky and breathe the air and, and live and make it and have God in the middle of it with her, just as Jesus was in Nazareth. So we feel confident that God is calling her now to a richer home and a greater home in heaven with himself and all her loved ones who have gone before her. If we manage to bridge this mystery, then we should understand, we should, as we open our hearts to it, we should experience the peace that passes understanding, that can, comes only from God. That that should wrap itself around Margaret now, that her, her suffering is over, her life, to be sure, is over. Her life with us here, and for that we grieve. But her life continues with God now, in the fullest sense. And for that we give thanks. And the comfort of the peace should flow round us and should flow round the family. As they sit here, her sisters, her brothers, her children, and Henry here at the end. That that Peace should touch them and bring them great, great comfort. We're involved in the mystery of God saving the world. And while we leave the world to its pursuits, all we can do is just take one moment, one person, and we can rejoice and be glad in that. And as our Christian faith strengthens us and enables us, we go forward from here, poorer because we've lost Margaret, but richer 
because we have gained so much from her life, her death, and her going to God. Please stand now and join me as we continue with our prayers of faith. And those who are doing the prayers of the faithful, if you'll please come forward. Pray for Margaret, who leaves us in death, that God will bring her safely home and share with her the joys of the kingdom of light, happiness, and peace. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who mourn here today for Margaret. We pray that they will receive strength to assist them in their sadness and grief. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who care for the sick and housebound. We give thanks for the skills and the commitment of doctors, nurses and carers. May they continue to reflect the compassion and healing of God who is made known to us in Christ. Lord, hear us. We pray for the deceased members of the Brady and King families. God, our Father, you have gathered us all into the family of your love. We remember especially Margaret's deceased parents, Peter and Dilly. May the light of Christ shine on them. Lord, hear us. Lord, and we join our prayers we have. The prayers we have, we join with the people who grieve and swear. We are particularly conscious of the people in Krishna and who have suffered such a terrible tragedy. And good people everywhere, we place before God as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, these and all our prayers we give to you this morning through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated, and those who bring up the gifts from the back, please go to the back. sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. <laughs> Father, we give you our gifts of bread and wine, the stuff of our days we give you, 
We give you Margaret. We give you every moment of her life, all that she was, all that she wanted to be. And we give you thanks for the way you were with her, walking with her throughout life. And we raise her up to you with all our other prayers, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For it is at your summons that we come to birth, by your will that we are governed, and at your command that we return, on account of sin to the earth from which we came. And when you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. from us. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, Lord God, Almighty Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Jason, please. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Martin, our Bishop, and all who serve and minister in your church. Remember also your servant, Margaret, whom you've called from this life to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may now be one with him in his resurrection. <clears throat> 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Margaret and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And Jesus taught us that we are all God's children. We stand, we lift our hearts and we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that with the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await in joyful hope the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, God, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world to mercy us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world to mercy us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say, say the word, word my soul shall be healed.
What is dying? I am standing on the seashore. A ship sails in the morning breeze and starts for the ocean. She is an object of beauty and I stand watching her till at last she fades on the horizon and someone at my side says she is gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that is all. 
She is just as large in the masts, hull and spars as she was when I saw her, and just as able to bear her load of living freight to its destination. The diminished size and total loss of sight is in me, not in her. And just at the moment when someone at my side says, she is gone. There are others who are watching her coming and other voices take up a glad shout. There she comes. And that is Diane. I would like to thank you all for the prayerful way in which we've been able to celebrate Margaret's life for going from us and celebrate our faith that gives us courage to believe that she is going to God. Thanks to the family, to Henry and the children, and everybody who read. Thank you to Geraldine who sang for us. On a day like this, we will always miss Having You Around was the last song she sang there. And it's true. We're losing Margaret. And not having her around, just simply being there is a loss. But because we are people of faith, because we believe in God and God's presence with us, because we believe our God is a saving God, we believe that Margaret is going to God. And that as long as we keep the faith as long as we celebrate our faith and allow God to be present in our lives. <clears throat> Margaret will not be too far away from us. So let us give thanks that we can do this and that we can stand up in this treasure this day and uh, I suppose stand in the contradiction of the Christian faith that even as we lose we rejoice and are glad. Please now stand and join me as we continue with our final prayers of farewell. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. I'll invite Father Tom now to join me as we incense and sprinkle holy water in the coffin. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid, hasten to meet her angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul. 
Let us pray into your hands. Father of mercies, we commend our sister Margaret in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Margaret in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith. Until we all meet in Christ, we are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And in peace now we take our sister Margaret to her place of final rest. And you'll understand that with the restrictions of COVID, we don't have sympathizing here in the church. So what I'm going to ask the family to do is carry the coffin out and place it in the coffin in the hearse outside. And then everybody can move outside and in the freedom of the outdoor, we can stand and mingle and it'd be possible to meet the family and shake hands with them there. Thank you. <coughs>